other than to pass it through a little money to the Benevolent Society. And yes, so 100% of all proceeds go towards a nonprofit group. Um, all proceeds go to the community, paranormal research, to ensure that they can better assist others. Uh, I, I don't know where these proceeds go from this long paragraph. Do any of you got any idea other than the fact that they can cover themselves when they keep it? Well, we've got lots of late breaking news in this. So, uh, licensed and insured. Well, from the Colorado Secretary of State's Business Division, uh, as of the 25th, two days ago, their business license was delinquent. So, uh, if they do have insurance, which I guess somebody has seen a form at one point, how many people think an insurance company is going to cover a business that doesn't have a business license? <laughs> Insurance companies try anything they can not to pay. That's a wonderful out. Uh, but wait, we have news. As of yesterday, they have refiled. They paid the late fees and are back in good standing with the business. Well, A, because they heard we were doing this. <laughs> um, but you also have to look. They failed to file their report quite a while back, since so see, April. They've been doing lots of business since then. Uh, last year, them and their co-company, which we'll talk about, cleared somewhere between thirty and $40,000 last year. Oh. Yeah. Maybe it's not just that. <laughs> <laughs> another group called RIP that this group split off from. Now, there's another group that is going to split off from these guys. They're all using the same business model. And that is Colorado Air Attack. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like they've really got their crap together? <laughs> um, so yeah, creators of the ghost lags. And uh, they, they make all kinds of uh, absolute garbage. Go on each day, look for Colorado Air Attack. They have some wonderful items for sale. When they say prototype devices, that means none of this crap works. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a good segue here, but they do use science, just ask them. Uh, State-of-the-art equipment to gather the evidence, and the equipment that they have, I'm telling you, is simply the best you can buy. Uh, they have such items as the ghost meter, the K2 meter, the spirit box, that's what threatened them. Uh, the mag light flashlight, because those talk to dead people. See what this is right here. We call that a shack hack because that was a radio you could buy, a radio shack. It was just a, a FM radio. So what they do is they throw it on the ground, stomp on it, break it. Now it's a ghost box. Um, what it does is they, they clip a little transistor in there so it doesn't uh, lock on any station. It just goes back and forth across all the stations. So you get a bunch of noise with an occasional word from radio stations, I suppose. Um, that was crazy talk, it's ghosts. Um, <laughs> and that's, that's one of their uh, scientific devices. Now, I don't know how scientific a mag light is. Yes, it is. Well, the tour begins. So first, their fearless leader has to make sure that she once again reassures everybody that this money isn't going to them. Thank <laughs> you. 
we had Dr. Karen Stolzman, who did that great talk earlier, and we have Logan here, who did that wonderful talk earlier as well. And Brian, they all went in. I sat in the car and claimed that my feet hurt. And I watched movies while they all went in and did this. <laughs> so, yeah, that's why you're doing the lecture. That's why so you're I'm standing up here going, and that's yeah, great fun. But uh, what do you want to say about this? Well, it, it's interesting. This door is claimed to open and close on its own. There's a vortex at the bottom of the stairway, so you've got to be careful with that. But they just go on and on about all of these stories down where they used to store the bodies of when the ground was too cold to dig in. That's the whole story. Now, at this point, we go out to the cemetery. Uh, their historian, he's reading from three by five cards. He has a book with him on the history of the cemetery, which those three by five cards were being written as the rest of the class was going on. So their historian really wasn't too hip on the history. Uh, but it, it kind of starts right here. Now we've got people, they're dragging the meters out, throwing them onto the crypt, and it's about to get much worse. Okay, mid-tour, here we are outside of one of the crypts. Now one thing I want everybody to think, when you see something like this going on, what would you think if this was your grandmother's grave site or your grandfather's grave site and you found somebody doing this? Hello, can you hear me? Why does it smell in there? <laughs> This has nothing to do with religious beliefs or whether or not the spirits of your ancestors are in the cemetery. Uh, let's, let's just be honest. If you have somebody buried in a cemetery, uh, on top of the financial burden that it created, uh, you also kind of bury the memories there. That, that's a place you can go to and visit to kind of feel a little closer to those memories. You know, that this is nothing about actual spirits that they're not letting rest in peace. We want to get across, this is about disrespect. You know, if, if you had a child that died, that was in this cemetery, and then you've got a bunch of these jackass ghost hunters out there hunting, you know, that, that that's just really offensive. And that's more than anything what we want to get across with this. When you can see here, while giving the tour, not only standing on the grave, but standing on the headstones. Or we'll take it a step farther, just like he said. Let's say you have a child there. What do you do when you go by in the middle of the night and you see somebody out there with a flashlight in your child's grave like this? And not just playing with the headstone, but going down and rifling through stuff on the grave. And you know what's become popular with this? A lot of people like to leave toys or treasured items by the child at the grave. Um, in fact, I had ghost hunters go in, steal those items, and then sell them on eBay as haunted items. So, remember we were talking about the urban legends that the Benevolent Society was concerned about? One of them was the witches. There's a very famous family, the Bacon family, uh, big in Colorado Springs history, that, uh, well, let's just say that they were, uh, they were a religious group of people, given the time, and uh, it's kind of nice to keep their memory of what they were and how they were, not this.